series or a sequence. All right, we'll start with a sequence because it's a more basic thing. The series is just a particular kind, right? Uh, a sequence is a bit like a set, right? And it's, it's a bunch of numbers, I suppose. But what does it have on top of? What, it, what does it have in addition to a set? What, what's more specific about a sequence that a set doesn't have? Do you remember? Uh, it's, oh, no, that's the other one. Uh, a set has order, right? Uh, sorry, a set doesn't have order. A sequence has order. <laughs> so, adding order makes it a sequence, right? And so we talked about things like a Fibonacci sequence. And then actually taking the sum of all of those, adding everything up, makes it a series, okay? So now we're going to have a look at a more specific kinds of sequence series. The first one is called arithmetic, and the second one's called geometric. But there's uh, plenty of things to actually look at under each one. So we'll just cover arithmetic ones today. Alright, so, um, what's an arithmetic sequence? Here's our definition. Uh, an arithmetic sequence contains terms that have a common difference. So, for instance, we've actually already looked at uh, a few arithmetic sequences before. For instance, the, uh, the sequence of even numbers. Right? So, for instance, when you think about how these work, because of how we've defined this sequence, right? there's a common difference between every pair of numbers. Right? So, um, you can see here, we started two, and our common difference is two. Right? In the same way, the odd numbers are also an arithmetic sequence. <laughs> In fact, they have the same difference, just a different starting point, right? Okay, so, do you remember before, we were defining in three different ways to actually specify what makes up a sequence, right? The first way, you can see on the board, right, which is we just name a few terms. Um, the second way was to give you a definition for each individual term. Right? So we'd say T of M is equal to something. So let's think about the even numbers, for instance. Forget about the uh, odd numbers. If you've got T1 being 2, T2 being 4, term 3 and term 4, and so on, how could we define the even numbers? Well, every even number, every term is just double whatever term it is, right? So the first term is 2, second term is 4. So you can just define it very simply as 2m, right? Now what you'll find is that every arithmetic sequence uh, is very similar in that, uh, let me that off, every term will be n times a constant, right? So say k times n. And there will be also uh, some other constant hanging off the side. Now let's have a look at this, right? Uh, for instance, if I were to take the uh, definition for the nth term of an even, the even number sequence, right? How would I adjust this? We looked at this before. How would I adjust it to make it the odd number sequence? What would I do? I'd just subtract one, right? And then you've got the odd numbers, okay? So what this number over here takes care of is where you begin. And this number over here takes care of how far do you progress as you go from term to term, right? Okay. So for instance, it'd be really easy to say, uh, these are the even numbers. What's T of n, what's the nth term for say the multiples of three? Multiples of three. Three, six, nine, 12. Every time you're going up, uh, what constant? You'll be going three, right? Okay. So in other words, if we were to define this, you know, if I said, um, instead of an n term, and in terms of, you know, counting, right, if I gave you this, y equals dx, you would recognize that as a linear function, right? It's growing at a steady rate, that's why it's a straight line. So, often you'll see people refer to arithmetic sequences or arithmetic series as a kind of linear function, because that's how they're growing, right? If you plotted them, uh, if you plotted all of your terms, 
you'd get, say, let's go one, two, two, four, off you go. It behaves just like a linear function that you know. Okay. All right, so if the nth term uh, is going to be some constant times our, our counting term, right? How do we get the sum of a whole sequence of such terms? Uh, let's think about how to calculate a sum. Okay, so if we're actually calculating, what if we add them all up, right? And let's consider an example where, uh, well, we want to consider sort of finite sequences, finite series for now, because if it's infinite, that is going to be really hard, hard to add up, right? Now, by the way, not impossible. You'll work out how to take care of uh, infinite sequences and series later on, but let's just start with something simple. So, for instance, let's consider um, the first bunch of odd numbers. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, all the way up to, say, 99. Okay? So, this is a finite sequence, right? The first odd numbers, or all the odd numbers, really, underneath 100. How would we find the sum of this? Well, uh, you could just bash it out, right? You could actually write out all the terms and get your calculator out. And you could just say 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. I really should have written it as a... Uh, a series, sorry about that. Uh, but of course, if you've ever been given this task, like say in you know, year 7 or 8 or something like that, you can see there's a faster way to do this, isn't there? Right? As there's, because of the, um, um, the order, the orderliness of this series, um, there's a pattern we can exploit. Right? And it'll become a little more obvious if I put a few more of the n terms on there. So let's see if I go from, say, 93. Okay, now, here's the idea. Because the arithmetic sequence is defined by this, this common difference theorem, right? You can see that if I take, for instance, um, term 1 and term, what would that be? Maybe term 50? Term 50? Term 49? It's term 50, because we're 2n minus 1, right? So there's term 50. If I add these two up, right, they're going to turn into 100. Right? Now, as I go forward one term here, I add 2. And if I come from here and go backward, I subtract 2. Right? So you can see, term 3 and term 49 also add up to 100. Right? And you can keep on doing this. Now, the question is, how many times can I do it? How many of these... Um, Hundreds am I going to get? Uh, and the answer is, well, because I am to make a hundred, I have to take two of the terms, right? So I'm pairing up everything. So how many pairs of, of people could you make out of, say, 50 people? Answer: 25 pairs, right? So here, uh, the sum, and I guess we're talking about um, the first 50 terms, right? The sum of the first 50 terms is equal to, in this case. We said there are 25 pairs of numbers here, and every pair adds up to 100. So, 2,500. That's our sum, right? So just like we had, you know, term 50, now we've got some new notation for sums. Okay, now, there's a specific example. Can we generalize this? How do we go about it? Um, I'll let you have a think, actually. If we didn't have actual numbers here, right, but say, let's define... The first term, whatever it is, let's call the first term A. That's a nice letter that indicates firstness. And the common difference between every number, what do you think would be a nice letter to call the common difference? Yeah, we're so original, are we? Um, if this is what defines our sequence, and that's all you need to define an average sequence, right? Um, instead of 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, right, um, I would have A, what would be the next term? A plus D. And then the next one would be? Yep, yeah, okay. 
Now, think carefully for a second. Um, here, we have 50 terms, yeah? If I had n terms, however many that would be, right? What would my last term be? Let's try and figure the patterns, right? Um, this is term one, right? This is term two. How many lots of the common difference does term one have? It has none of them, right? So you could write this as a plus zero d, if you like. Um, the second term has a plus, I'm not going to say it, I'm just going to write it, okay? Um, the third term has two lots of d. So how many lots of the common difference will the very last, the nth term, have? A minus 1. So I've, I've kind of run out of space. A plus n minus 1 lots of the common difference. Okay. So can you come up with an expression for, well, what's the sum of the whole thing in general terms? 